Getting a protection order can be confusing and even a bit overwhelming. Hi, I'm Jane. If you or a loved one is looking for information on how to file for a protection order in Pennsylvania, I'm here to explain this process so you know what to expect. There's a lot of information in this video, but we hope you'll feel a lot more comfortable after spending some time with me reviewing the steps involved. In Pennsylvania, you can file the paperwork at your local courthouse at no charge. If you have trouble speaking, hearing, or understanding English, courthouse staff can also help you with interpreter services. You can go through the process on your own or with an advocate from the local domestic violence or sexual assault program. Someone from the courthouse can help you get in touch with an advocate. Advocates are trained to review your situation and help you file the paperwork, attend court hearings, provide counseling and support, and connect you to area resources. Again, all of these services are free. You may also have a lawyer represent you, but it's not required. However, know that advocates and courthouse staff cannot give you legal advice. A protection order lays out rules for the person who is hurting or threatening you. You can have input in making the rules. If the person hurting you breaks these rules, they can be punished and the police can arrest them. First, you'll need to establish which kind of protection order is right for you. There are three kinds of protection orders. Number one, a protection from abuse order, or PFA, protects someone who is being physically hurt, followed, threatened, or sexually hurt by an intimate partner, dating partner, or family member. Number two, a protection from sexual violence order, or SVP, is for someone who is a victim of sexual violence by someone they didn't have an intimate relationship with, like a friend, stranger, or coworker, and is still at risk of being hurt by that person. Number three, a protection from intimidation order, or PFI, is a little different because a PFI protects a minor from someone who is 18 or older who is harassing or stalking them who they did not have an intimate relationship with. For example, a PFI protects a child who is being harassed by an adult coach or a child who is being stalked by an adult stranger. It is important to note that a child can't file for the protection order on their own. A parent, adult household member, or a guardian must file a protection order for them. While it's important to understand which protection order you need, they all follow the same legal process. Here are the steps generally involved in filing a protection order. The first step is to fill out the petition. A clerk at the courthouse can help you fill out the paperwork called a petition to apply for the protection order. Then you meet with a judge that same day for the first hearing called the temporary order hearing. The judge will review what you wrote in the petition and will either grant or deny you a temporary protection order. Regardless of whether you are granted a temporary protection order, you will have another hearing to determine whether you receive a final protection order. The clerk will schedule the final hearing for you and the defendant, who is the person you are filing the protection order against, to come back within 10 business days for the final hearing. Let's take a closer look at the first step in this process, filing the petition. The petition asks for information about you, any children you have, and where you live and work. You will need to provide their names, ages, how they are related, and where they live. The petition asks for the same details about the defendant. You can also provide a description of the defendant and any special physical details like tattoos, piercings and scars, eye and hair color. This is very helpful to the sheriff when they serve the protection order paperwork to the defendant. It is important for the judge to know if the defendant used guns or weapons to hurt or threaten you. If so, you can ask the judge to order the gun or weapons to be relinquished or turned over to the sheriff to hold while the protection order is in effect. It is also important for the sheriff to know if there are guns or other weapons present on the property so they can take safety measures while serving the defendant with a protection order paperwork. In the petition, you may ask the court to protect your children too. You can also ask for custody of the children as part of the protection order. 
If the judge grants you custody, it is possible that it will only be temporary. You may need to file a separate custody petition and come back to the courthouse again. The courthouse staff can give you information about a separate custody request, along with attorneys and legal clinics that may be able to help you. If the defendant has threatened or hurt another family member, you can ask the court to protect that person as well. Next, the petition asks about the reason why you are filing for the protection order. You will be asked what happened. It is important for you to be specific to provide dates, times, and places. Remember to include any reports you made to law enforcement or medical personnel. There are a number of protections you can ask for to keep you and your family safer. For example, the court can tell the defendant not to have contact with you or your family, to stay away from you wherever you are, home, work, school, and other places you name, and to no longer live in your home. After you finish, the courthouse staff will file the petition for you. There is never any cost to you to have the petition filed or the defendant served. After your petition is filed, the clerk will make sure it is given to a judge for review as soon as possible. The judge has to review the petition talk to you about it and decide whether to grant a temporary protection order the same day that it is filed. When the judge meets with you, she will want to know what happened that makes you believe you are in danger? How have you been hurt? And have you been harmed by this defendant before? Also, if you believe a child is being physically or sexually hurt and you are asking to protect them under the temporary protection order, the judge will ask you about that as well. Overall, the judge looks at whether the situation is dangerous, according to the law, to decide whether to grant or approve your temporary protection order. If the judge grants a temporary protection order, your protection starts as soon as the judge signs the order and lasts until the next hearing, which is the final protection order hearing. Someone from the Sheriff's Department will go out right away to serve or hand the paperwork to the defendant, which will include your petition, the temporary order, and the date of your final hearing. You will be notified when this is done. Once the defendant has the order, the defendant may not be allowed to have contact with you. If the defendant contacts you in person, or through text, phone, email, or social media, or tries to contact you through other people like family or friends, that is a violation of your protection order. The order gives police the authority to arrest the defendant if that person is violating the terms of the order. If the defendant breaks or violates your order, they may go to jail. Remember, law enforcement can only enforce the protection order if you call them about violations. You cannot violate any order that is written for your protection. Even if you want to have contact, the defendant can still be arrested and could end up in jail. Be sure you keep your copy of the temporary protection order with you at all times. If the defendant doesn't follow the order, you can report the violation to the police. If the judge does not sign the temporary order, there is nothing legally in effect to make the defendant stay away from you. If you need help staying safe, ask the clerk for the phone number for the local domestic violence or sexual assault program. Even if the judge does not grant the temporary order, the court must still schedule a hearing which must be held within 10 business days, unless you ask them not to. At the final hearing, you'll be able to present evidence supporting your case and witnesses. The final order hearing is the last step in the process and is the second hearing you will have before the judge. This is when you can ask the judge for a final protection order that can last for up to three years. Sometimes people who file for a protection order are scared their abusers will find out they filed it's important for you to understand that your abuser is notified and invited to the final hearing, even if the judge does not approve your temporary protection order. You can bring witnesses, an advocate from the domestic violence or sexual assault program, and a lawyer with you to the final hearing. The defendant may also have an attorney with them. You and the defendant may try to reach an agreement regarding the final order. 
You can't be forced to agree to anything that you don't feel safe agreeing to. If you and the defendant can't agree, you will have a final hearing on the petition you filed before the judge. You, the defendant, and any witnesses you bring will be placed under oath to tell the truth. You will testify about the reasons why you filed for a protection order. The defendant will be given a chance to speak to the judge too. Based on the testimony and evidence presented, the judge will decide whether or not to grant you a final protection order. After the final order hearing, and before you leave the courthouse, a copy of that order will be provided to both you and the defendant. It will be filed with the court, and it will be available to law enforcement if you ever need to call them for help. It is also a good idea to keep a copy of that order with you. Remember, the order is effective as soon as it is signed by the judge. I know this was a lot of information, but basically there are four main steps for you to follow. Number one, you fill out a petition. Number two, you review the petition with the judge. Number three, the judge grants or denies a temporary protection order and the abuser is notified about your petition and the final hearing. Number four, a decision on your order is made at the final hearing. This is a brave step you are taking to keep you and your family safe. Please remember that there are free support services available to you through your local domestic violence or sexual assault program at every step in this process.